Hey everybody, good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where, when you're watching. Uh, my name is Megan and I'll be guiding you through a one hour restorative practice. Today we're going to do a little bit of movement in our restorative. So traditionally in restorative you stay in every pose for three to five minutes. Today I'm going to add a little bit of movement. So we'll start with um, a light meditation and stillness and a little bit of a sound bath. And we'll start with some kind of slower stretches. We'll get into a little bit of movement and then we'll get into that true restorative three to five minute um, stretches towards the middle and end of practice. If you happen to have props, props would be great in this class. I recommend getting a pillow. If you have like something from your bed, then maybe grab two to give you a little bit more comfort. Two blocks would be great. Uh, books will do. Amazon boxes will do anything that's box or book or block like will do. A blanket would be nice, especially when we're doing stuff on our knees and a strap or something strap like. So maybe a belt or a rope or anything that's strap like. So go ahead and grab your pop props and head towards your mat. I do have a playlist set up for you today. If you're following me on Spotify, that playlist is called Rockin' Restorative. Doing things a little bit differently, I'm adding a little bit of soft rock and roll songs into our restorative instead of our traditional meditative yoga songs. Uh, I did that with my power flow today too. I did like a kind of bluesy, I call it swamp rock playlist and it was really fun. So I'm doing that for restorative as well. My username is Megan of the Moon. If you type that into Spotify, it's M-E-G-A-N. I'll link to this playlist in the comments as well so that you guys can find it. And yeah, we'll get started right away. Grab your props, and then I'll start with you in just a second here. I'm gonna see if I can link to this playlist really quick and comment. I wonder if I can comment while I'm live. We're gonna find out. All right, it looks like I can't comment while I'm live. So yeah, just search it in Spotify, Megan of the Moon, M-E-G-A-N, and our playlist is called Rock and Restorative. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Making our way onto our mats. Maybe you're sitting on a blanket here. You're gonna grab your pillow. You're gonna bring it up to your low back. And then you're just gonna lay back onto your pillow. Maybe you roll up your blanket, place it underneath your knees. Your arms are gonna come out by your side. Palms facing up, start that playlist if you haven't already started it. And then just get nice and comfortable on your back. Close your eyes. Take a nice slow, deep inhale through your nose, fill up. Open up, exhale, let it go. Again, like that, slow inhale, fill it up. Exhale, release, sink into your pillow, sink into your mat, disengage every muscle in your body, let yourself be dead weight. Take a scan of your body, relax your brows, your neck, your shoulders, your legs. Really try to disengage everything happening, even those subtle, subtle flexions in your body, let it go. Continue with those nice, long, deep breaths, and with every exhale, try to release something, tension of the mind, tension of the body, lingering distractions, anything that's not really serving you in this next hour, try to let it go, push it out with your breath. Inhale peace, inhale calm, inhale stillness and quietness. Exhale distractions, exhale static, exhale negativity, anything that you don't want in your space. Continue to inhale this fresh, new energy. Exhale that old stack of energy. I'm gonna start by playing a little bit of the bowls. I want you to really turn off everything else. Tune into your sense of sound. What do you hear? Notice the vibration, the sound. Notice when I switch from one bowl to another.
to your last couple breaths here. Embracing this stillness, this peace before we start to move. Maybe set an intention for class. This can be anything. It can be internal. It can be physical. Finding the edge in each of your stretches. It can be more mental. Being the observer of your thoughts. Noticing what you can change and what you can keep. It can be about silencing the mind, really committing to your breath. It can be anything. It doesn't even have to be something for you. We raise all this energy in class. And so if there's someone out there you know who needs it, someone who needs a little bit of healing, needs a little bit of love, maybe you dedicate this practice, this hour towards them. Start to bring some movement into your fingers and your toes. And flip over your palms. Nice and slow, start to press up into a seat. Find an Indian style seat, cross your legs. Bring your pillow off to your side. Move your blocks, blankets, etc. to the side. And then from your cross legged seat, you're going to bring your right hand down to the mat or the floor beside you. And you're just going to reach your left arm up and over the right. Now I want you to keep an open shoulder here. So not a closed shoulder. We have an open shoulder. So you're almost twisting from the chest. Reaching left fingers. Opening the chest and the shoulder. Taking your gaze up towards the ceiling. And maybe you do some balances here. Bending and straightening this right elbow. You should really feel this through the left side body. Last bounce here, inhale, open, twist left, open that shoulder even more, draw your elbow down, and then exhale, we're going to close the shoulder now, and we're going to walk our hands out, so we're going to forward fold towards the right, stretching through our left side body, and when I do this, I get a little bit of lift in my left hip, so you want to try to ground that hip down. And from here, start to walk your hands to the left until you reach the center. Let your head hang between your biceps. Feel that stretch in the low back and the hips. I even feel this into my glutes a little bit. Take it only as deep as feels okay in your body. I just taught another class before this. So I'm super warmed up. But if you're not quite as warmed up, walk your fingers back a little bit. We're not using our props yet. So try not to take it too deep. And then walk your fingers in. Find a tall seat, bring your left hand to the floor beside you. Same thing on this side, reach your right arm up and over. Reaching fingers towards the left wall. Open your right shoulder, gaze comes up, and then take those bounces here. Bouncing into that left elbow. Keeping your right hip grounded down. Big stretches. And this last one on your inhale, you're going to open up, open your chest, open your shoulder, draw your right elbow down, squeeze, exhale, coming all the way back around. Now we're going to close our shoulder and fold to the left. Let your head hang between your biceps, ground this hip down.
And then from here, walk your hands back to the center just like we did before. Maybe you take it a little bit deeper this time. Not here for too long, just a few breaths. When your inhale starts to rise up, finding your seat. And we're going to come onto our knees. So if you want to place your blanket out in the center of your mat, give your knees some support, you can. It's always nice to give a little cushion to the knees. <laughs> All right. Knees onto the mat. Bring them together to touch. You're gonna bring your hands behind you, fingers facing your legs, your feet. And then from here, you're gonna start to lift the knees, getting into the fronts of the ankles. So maybe you want your blanket under your ankles here, actually, if that feels a little funky on the wooden floor. Mine feels okay, but I have a really thick mat. So just bouncing. Getting into those ankles and then see if you can hold those knees up. Couple breaths. And let your shins come down to the mat. Make your way into tabletop. Shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. Toes can be tucked or flat on the floor, either way. Inhale, cow pose, arch your back. Drop your belly, chin and tailbone lift. Exhale, cat, round through your spine, chin to chest, press into your palms, puff up between your shoulder blades. Inhale, cow, belly drops, arching through the back, bone spread, chin lifts. Exhale, cat. Take a couple more rounds of cat cow on your own, tap into breath to movement. Inhale into one pose, exhale into the next. And then add any additional movements that feel good in your body. Roll out your head and neck, maybe. Barrel rolling through the back. This doesn't have to be a yoga pose. This can just be any movements that feel good. Maybe you close your eyes so you can really get into your senses. Maybe tuck your toes, your hips back towards your heels. Get into the toes, the feet. We skip child's pose, so maybe you come into child's pose, if that feels good. Massage that space into your brows, rock right and left. Don't feel like you have to keep your legs and your hands on the floor here. Maybe you reach an arm high, circle out through your shoulders, or kick a leg back. The only thing I ask is that whatever you do on one side, you do it on the other as well. So if you take big circles in your shoulders on one side, make sure you get into the other side. Take your last few breaths here. And then come back into your tabletop position. Grab your two blocks if you have them. If you don't have blocks, you're going to come into a traditional puppy's pose. For a traditional puppy's pose, you're going to start at a tabletop and then you're going to walk your hands out, relaxing your shoulders and your chest down towards the mat. So it's going to be tucked or flat on the floor. Chin is going to rest on the mat. For a modified puppy's pose with blocks, you're bringing your block shoulder width distance apart, either level one or level two. And you're drawing your elbows down to your block. Palms come together to touch, and then same thing here, you're going to relax your chin towards the mat, your chest towards the mat. Thumbs are going to reach for the back of your neck or upper back. Forehead maybe touches the mat, maybe not, either way is okay. Lengthen. With every exhale, letting your chest melt a little bit closer to the mat. We're not here for too long. Traditional puppies poses, I want you to shift forward onto your belly for Sphinx pose. 
Just coming onto your belly with your forearms on the mat. Modify puppies poses. I want us to wait here for just for another few breaths. And then you're going to straighten out your arms. We're going to move your blocks out from underneath you. Come into that traditional puppy pose just for a moment to notice the difference of what it feels like. And then you're going to shift forward onto your belly. So everyone should be on their belly, on the mat, onto our forearms, sphinx pose. Broaden your collarbones, lift your chest just slightly. Roll your neck over to the right. Drop your right ear towards your right shoulder and hold for a moment. And then roll it all the way around. Maybe do two circles. And then we're going to come the other way. Drop your left ear towards your left shoulder. Stretch that right side. Hold. And then we'll move it around. And come back to center. You're going to press into your hands. Bring them underneath your shoulders. We're doing kind of like a lazy upward facing dog here. So thighs are on the mat. If this is too much on your low back, walk your hands out a little bit more until you feel comfortable. Make sure your shoulders aren't up here in your ears. I want them pressed out of your ears. Big stretch in the low back. Hold here for a breath or two. And then you're gonna look over your left shoulder and you're gonna cross your left leg over your right. You can kind of rock back and forth a little bit, stretching through that right side. And then let's come over to the other side. Back through center, look over your right shoulder. Right leg crosses over left. Couple rocks here. Make your way back to center where we started. Inhale, exhale, devotional pose. Child's pose with your knees closed. Hold for your inhale. Exhale, cat. Roll forward. Chin to chest, rounding through the spine all the way. And then we're going to shift forward to that lazy upward facing dog. Once you're here, lift your chin, look up. Exhale, devotional pose, hips back. Again, hold for your inhale. Exhale, rounding forward. Press your hips to the mat, lift your chin, inhale. Exhale, devotional pose, sit down and back. Hold for your inhale, exhale, tabletop position, tuck your toes, make your way to downward facing dog, hips high and back. Stretch out through your legs, bend one knee and then the other. As you bend one knee, drop that opposite heel down towards the mat, stretch the calf, the heelys. Take anything else you need in your downward facing dog. And then let your heels look forward. Exhale, ragdoll utanasana. Walk your feet behind your hands. Bend through your elbows and your knees. Grab onto opposite elbows or interlace your fingers behind your head, either way. And let this be about the decompression of your spine rather than the hamstring stretch. So nod your head yes. Shake your head no. Maybe sway the elbows left and right. No weight in your neck. Really let everything hang. And then release your fingertips down to the mat. Keep your feet hip width distance apart. Keep it bending your knees. Tuck your chin to your chest. And then we're slowly going to roll up. Rising nice and slow. Low belly. Kind of pull up and in. Chin stays on your chest the whole time. Once you get to the top, take a big shoulder loop back. And then take it down slow. Rebend through your knees. Round through your spine. Hand comes to the floor. Look in between your legs. Chin to chest, inhale, rise up. Slow, feel every vertebrae along the way. 
Chin stays on your chest until the end. This time, bring your arms up. Take a big shoulder loop back. And then re-bend through your knees and fold. Hands to the floor. Look in between your legs. Last one. Nice and slow. Inhale, roll up. Chin stays on your chest. Big shoulder loop back. And then re-bend. Hands down to the mat. Heels are your feet back together to touch. Step your left foot back for low lunge. From here, find some organic movement. Stretch out in whatever way feels good. Anything you need here. Maybe you drop your back knee. Look over your shoulder, over your right knee. Maybe you straighten out that front leg. Sit your hips back, half split. Whatever feels good here. And then you're gonna make your way into a wide-legged forward fold, walking your hands over to the left. First time here, you can take whatever you need. Stretch it out. Maybe your hands come behind your ankles. Swaying left and right. If you're still sore in the back, maybe bring your hands out in front of you and do that same roll. Lengthen and lift for a halfway lift. Bend through your knees and round through the side, look in between your legs. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, round it out. Whatever you need here. And then when you're feeling good, start to walk your hands towards the left. We're coming into Skandasana. So you're going to bend into your left knee. Your right toes are going to flex up towards the sky. Hands are on the floor here. You're engaging through your quad. Option to stay right here if this is enough of a stretch. If you want to take this a little bit deeper, you're going to walk your hands at a 45 degree angle to the right. Let your head hang between your biceps. Breathe here. Keep that engagement in your right quad so you're not locking out your joints and your knees. And start to walk your hands back and towards your body. Transitioning into a little lunge towards the back of the room. Lift your hips, pivot your foot, and then find that organic movement on the side. We're moving in a circle today, at least for the beginning of class. I just had a mandala power flow. So I've been in the groove of moving in circles. I like it. Always fun to add something a little different in. Keep stretching it out. Doesn't have to be the exact same as last time. We're not always even in what we need from side to side. Tuck your back toes, lift your back knees, step your right foot forward, forward fold. Heel toe your feet apart, we're gonna come into gorilla pose. You're gonna slide your hands underneath your feet so your toes tickle your wrists. Bend through your knees and pull your elbows out to the side, look in between your legs. You can play with lifting and lowering your hips, if that feels good. You can stay here. If you want to get crazy, I did this in class the other day, um, an online class that I took, of course, and I kind of fell over, so we'll see how it goes. I just remembered it now. So if you want to try something new, bend through your knees, your hips, your heels will lift, and you're just going to sit into your hips like you're doing a frog pose. Oh good, I didn't fall this time. And this is just an option. You can stay in traditional gorilla or not, either way. This is a big one for the inner thighs, the hips, and to our hands and wrists. If you've lowered down with me, drop your heels and come back into traditional gorilla. Slip your hands out from your feet, heel toe your feet back together to touch. Slight bend in your knees. Inhale, rise at mountain pose. Arms come up overhead. Exhale, baby back in. Cactus out your arms, squeeze your shoulders, lift your chest. 
Try not to dump into your low back. Hold for your inhale. And exhale, release your hands behind your back and release your fingers, find a bind. Maybe you press your knuckles down if that feels okay. Draw palms towards one another. Squeeze through your shoulders. Bend through your knees and find a forward fold. Keeping your bind, let your hands fall away from your back, opening into the shoulders. And release your hands down to the floor. Step your left foot back for a low lunge. And then we're going to find Skandasana on this side. Walk your hands over to the right, left rather. Bend through your right knee. Lift your left toes up towards the mat. Option is stay right here. Left toes are flexed. Engage through your right quad. If you found a fold on the other side, maybe you fold on this side as well. Walk your hands slightly to the left. Let your head hang. Just a few breaths here. And start to walk your hands back and towards your body. And then we'll make our way into wide-legged forward fold. Hips high, hands down to the mat. And from here, we're going to stretch into the hips a little bit more. So you're going to bend your knees. Let your knees lean on the outside of your arms or elbows. You can take some balances here, or you can stay in this pose. Kind of preparing us, almost like a frog pose. A couple breaths. And then he'll rise back up to five or to wide legged forward fold and walk your hands over to the left. Low lunge, step your right foot forward, forward fold. Scoot yourself back so you're at the center of your mat or more towards the back of your mat. And then you're going to lift your heels off the mat and you're going to draw your heels together to touch and your knees out wide. From here, we're going to sit into our hips. So kind of like a frog pose, but with our heels off the mat. And we're gonna get into garland pose. So if this is enough, maybe you stay right here. If you wanna take this a little bit deeper, you're gonna walk your hands out. Let your head hang between your biceps, sit your hips slightly back. Hold here. Last few breaths here. And start to lift through your chest, draw your knees together to touch, drop your knees. Now we're in a toe squat. Grab your strap. Maintain your toe squat, sit up and back onto your heels. This is one of those poses that would start to hurt me right away when I first started doing it. So if that's how it is for you, bring your hands back down to the mat and then just put as much pressure back in your heels as feels okay in your toes. We're taking our toe squat. We're gonna to try to distract ourselves from the pain in our feet with our strap. Take a nice wide grip on your strap up overhead and then pull your elbows down like you're doing a uh, baby back bend. Open through your chest and your shoulders. Nice climbers, you're nice climbing shoes all day. This is really good for getting into your toes, the soles of your feet. Not here for too much longer. Widen out your grip, straighten out your arms, and then see if you can bring that strap all the way down to your low back. Keep your chest pressed out. Make sure you're not rounding through your spine. Take a couple more of these. <sighs> Breathe through it. Find engagement in your lats for those sticky spots. One more back and forth. On this next one, when you lift your strap up, you're going to bring it around, dip your strap, hands to the mat, untuck your toes, slap the tops of your feet. Now we're going to 
gonna get into that true restorative where we're gonna stay in each pose for three to five minutes. So I'm gonna give you options for this hip stretch. I'm going to go with double pigeon, AKA square pose, AKA fire lock. If you wanna do pigeon or figure four on your back, I'm okay with either of those. We're still gonna get that stretch into the same area, but on your back is gonna be a little bit nicer on your knees. And pigeon, some people, I mean, sometimes I even just love the pigeon and need to go there, so I feel that. Do whatever you need to do. You're gonna stack your right chin on your left if you're following me. And maybe it looks like this. Oh, and first, I wanna let you know that it's not a cross-legged seat. So you're not crossing ankle over to the floor. You're stacking shin on shin. Might look something like this, might look something like this. Either way is okay. If it looks like this, you want to use your props. Put a blanket under one knee, put a block under the other knee. We're going to come into a forward fold. So if you're really high, maybe you just bring this pillow to its tall side and lean like this at first. I'm going to start our time now. So maybe you start here as you create space. Maybe you remove props. Take it a little bit deeper. Listen to your body. And take it only as deep as feels okay. Tension, pressure is okay in this class, but pain is not. So if you start to feel that pinching, that kind of nerve, funky feeling, I want you to back out of the pose a little bit or entirely add props to make yourself comfortable. Try not to take this too crazy, too deep. Finding a nice edge without hurting ourselves here. You'll have three minutes in this pose. I think you're almost about a minute, almost a minute in. So you'll have about two more minutes here. Try to breathe into it. Try to keep your focus inward. Big breaths, big exhales into those areas of tension, creating space around our big major muscle groups. You're over halfway there, so if you feel like taking a little bit deeper, you can. Up to you. About 45 seconds, 40 seconds left here. Last couple breaths. Let your inhale start to rise up. You're gonna lead yourself back. Make your way to making your way into figure four. So your right ankle is gonna cross over your left knee. Hands are behind you, and then you're just gonna rock left and right. On this next one, let your right foot come all the way down to the mat, sit up tall, right knee crosses over left. Right hand behind your hip, inhale, left arm high. Exhale, twist. Hook your right arm to the outside of your left knee. Look over your right shoulder. Twisting through our spine, inhale, look up. Exhale, twist it. And 
them back around to center, let your legs go long, and just shake them out for a moment. All right, let's get into the other side. Left shin stacking on top of our right. This I have, I have a lot more lift in this knee, so I think I'm gonna put a blanket underneath this knee for this first one, or at least for a little while. Add props as you need to, and of course, if you did pigeon or figure four, make sure you even out, so do that one on this side as well. I'm gonna start our time now. Find your props. Maybe fold, maybe stay still for a little while and fold as you create space. And you'll have three minutes here. You're approaching halfway. Maybe you take it a little bit deeper, maybe you take it a little bit easier, depending on how deep you went in the beginning. Listen to your body. Last couple breaths. And then you're going to inhale nice and slowly start to rise up. Sit up and back. Hands come behind you, making our way into a figure four. Left ankle crossing over right this time. And then you're going to let your legs windshield wiper left and right. On this next one, you're gonna bring your left foot all the way down to the mat or the floor. Sitting up tall, stacking left shin over right. Left hand comes behind your left hip. Inhale, right arm high. Exhale, easy twist. Look over your left shoulder. Hook your right arm to the outside of your left knee. Twist to the spine. On your inhale, find the length. Exhale, twisting a little deeper. And come on out. Let your legs go long. I want to do a straight leg fold as well as a wide leg fold. So we're going to go a little bit shorter in time, um, but we're going to get both of them in. So for our straight leg forward fold, I want you to grab your blanket, roll it up underneath you. So make a nice roll. And then you're going to slide it underneath your knees. So, 
This will enable you to keep a slight bend in your knees. And the slight bend will help you to direct the stretch right into the belly of the hamstring instead of kind of keeping our knees straight and getting into those tendons, that kind of uh, stinging feeling behind your knees. All right, so your legs are out long and you'll have a couple minutes here. So again, maybe you start nice and easy, something like this. You can put a block to rest under your chin and then maybe you take it deeper, come on to your pillow flat if you want to get really deep. Maybe I like to put my block to the outside of my feet to keep them nice and flat. And then maybe you hook your strap around it, something like that. All right, I'm gonna start our time now. We have two minutes here. We've already kind of been preparing for a good 30 seconds to a minute. And just to feel the difference, on your inhale, press into your fingers and something lengthen through your spine. Lift up, flat spine. And exhale, round through your spine. Bend through your elbows. Draw nose towards knee. This is where we want to be with this forward fold. We're doing a rounded spine fold. minute in, we have one minute left. And we'll rise up. And then we're going to get into our wide legged forward fold. So I'm going to move to the side of my mat so I can face you guys. But you can get into whatever direction feels best in your space. So the wider you bring your legs, the harder that the fold will be. So find something in the middle so where you can still fold. Bring your pillow out in front, same thing. Maybe it comes up to its side. Maybe you place a blanket on top, pillow on top, uh, block on top rather. Get nice and comfortable. We'll have two minutes here. So you're gonna bring your fingertips to the side of your pillow if you're using your pillow and you're just gonna lubricate the hips a little bit by working side to side. And then you're gonna make your way into your fold however feels comfortable. And you'll be there for two minutes. A little bit over two minutes.
I can't remember which time we started. I think we have about 45 seconds left here. That's what we're going with. Last breath. And let's start to rise up. All right. You can stay on the side of your mat. You're going to bend your right leg in and your left leg behind you. So your left knee is bent behind you. Your right leg is bent in front of you. Your right foot is touching your left thigh. And then you're gonna bring your pillow to the side. So it's on your right hip. You're gonna look over your right shoulder and you're gonna bring your left ear to the mat. So you're twisting from the spine. And if bringing your left ear to the mat doesn't feel good, you can bring your right ear to the mat. Not in this one for too long. Last few breaths on the side. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders and nice and slow start to work your way up. You're gonna do the other side, flip out your legs, right leg bends in front of you, back leg, right, or right leg bends behind you, left leg is gonna bend in front of you. So the sole of your left foot touches the top kind of side of your right leg. Your pillow comes into your left hip. You're looking to the left over your left shoulder and you're bringing your right ear to the mat. Last few breaths here. And bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Start to rise up into a seat. I'm gonna grab the bowls so we can get into our meditation and sound bath. Go ahead. Moving towards Savasana, if there's any final stretches you want to do before you get into Savasana, start to take them now. Happy baby, plow pose, restorative bridge with your blocks, whatever you need. 
I'm gonna grab the bowls and we'll move towards the end of class. you guys if you're not already in spasana start to make your way there i think <clears throat> all right bring your arms out to your sides palms facing up close your eyes start to settle into your spasana take a slow inhale through your nose fill up Big open mouth, exhale, release. Let it go. Again, like that, nice and slow inhale. Big exhale, sink into your mat. Become dead weight against your mat. If your eyes aren't already closed, start to close your eyes. You're holding any tension in your brows or your forehead. Start to unfurrow through your brows. Relax your forehead. If your tongue is at the roof of your mouth, let it fall from the roof of your mouth. Unhinge your jaw. Maybe you open your mouth nice and wide. Stretch your jaw out for a moment if that feels good. And let it go. Relaxing all the muscles in your jaw, your neck, your shoulders. Let everything melt. Savasana, corpse pose, dead man's pose. Be dead weight. And start to visualize this relaxed flow of energy running down from your shoulders into your arms, your biceps. Give it color, give it texture, give it temperature. Send it down around your biceps into your elbows, your forearms, your wrists, creeping into your fingers, circling around your palms. Maybe you even start to feel a pulsing sensation at your palms or your fingertips. Focus here, try to grow that sensation. And then maybe find something to visualize at your fingertips. So for me, I'm seeing kind of these electrical like threads, these strings coming out of my fingertips and pulsing. Find something in your mind's eye to represent the feeling in your body, wherever you're feeling pulsing your vibrations. And don't forget about your breath. Keep breathing nice and slow. And fill up your chest, your belly with that warm sensation, that light. Relaxing every muscle along the way. Send it down around your low back, your glutes, your quads, your hips, down around your knees. Penetrating every muscle, healing everything along the way. Send it around your shins, your calves, your ankles, through the soles of your feet and into your toes. Until you're filled with this warmth, this light, this relaxed state of mind and body. No tension, no distractions. This is you and your essence. Try to maintain the stillness for the last few minutes of class as I play the bowls, and I'll call you out when it's time.
days. I'm feeling like we need a little more time here in Shavasana just to absorb this kind of bliss, this peace of mind and body, this meditation. So I'm going to leave you here. And once I'm done talking, I want you to see if you can take just another 10 breaths. Just another 10 breaths on your own without my guidance. Maintaining that stillness, that peace, holding on to that last bit of meditation before you go on the rest of your day. So once I finish talking, please try to take those last 10 breaths. See how it feels. Notice if it's challenging, if it's hard. Be the observer of your thoughts, of your feelings. As always, it is my honor and my passion to be here with you. So thank you for tuning in virtually. I can't wait to see you guys in person. But for now, this is what we got. I'm so happy to be here. So really good work on your mats. Really good job making it to your mat. Even if you're here at all, I'm proud of you. Thank you, thank you. The love, the light in me honors God's to respects the love, the light in you. Namaste.